welcome to my first YouTube video. Today I'll be talking about the back. So for the first part of the video, I'll be talking about the back anatomy and also all of the muscles which are contained in the back. So for all of you who are more well versed in the muscles of the back, you can actually feel free to skip right ahead to all the exercises which are uh, most effective in building a bigger and better back. I'll be including the timestamp below in the description box. This video will be especially important for all the ladies who are looking for a more hourglass figure because you know building a bigger back will actually give the illusion of a smaller waist. If you like content like this, I'll be posting regularly. So do give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel. Okay, there are several individual muscles within the back anatomy and it's super important to take a quick look at them to understand the rationale behind some of the exercises that you're doing in the gym to ensure that you target the specific muscle groups you want to target effectively. Let's start with the trapezius, aka traps. The trapezius muscles are located between your shoulder and neck. As they extend higher than the collarbone height, they are most noticeable from the front. It's important to note, however, that they actually reach all the way down to the lower back region. The traps contribute mainly to the thickness of the back. The traps consist of three sections of muscle fibers, the upper traps, middle traps, and lower traps fibers. The traps are quite a complex set of muscles. The upper traps mainly play a role in scapular elevation, the mid traps in scapular retraction, and the lower traps in both scapular retraction and scapular depression. Wait, I know. What even is the scapula? Let me get into that real quick. The scapula is also known as the shoulder bone or the shoulder blade and it connects the humerus, which is the upper arm bone, with the clavicle, which happens to be the collarbone. Alright, now that we've put a face to this mysterious scapula, we can continue with the functions of the traps. Since the upper traps are mainly involved in scapular elevation, aka the lifting up of the shoulder blade, they are best targeted by exercises such as shrugs, deadlifts, and power cleans. On the other hand, since the mid and lower traps are mainly involved with scapular retraction and depression, they are best targeted by exercises which involve rowing or the motion of bringing the shoulder blades back towards each other. Such exercises include the dumbbell rear deltoid raises, cable face pulls, barbell rows, and seated rows. Moving on to my favourite, the latissimus dorsi, also known as the lats or wings, are the largest and most well-known of all the back muscles. Once these muscles are large enough, they are responsible for your body's V taper because of their protruding appearance under your armpit area and the back of your ribs. For women seeking a more hourglass figure, the lats can contribute to the illusion of a smaller waist when done right, so never forget about your lats. The lats are responsible for shoulder adduction and shoulder extension, with the former meaning the bringing of the arms towards the body from the side and the latter the bringing of the arms towards the body when it's placed at the front. The lats can be targeted through lat pull-downs, pull-ups, barbell bent over rows, dumbbell one-arm rows and dead lifts. Moving on, we have the rhomboid muscles. They are actually located on the upper portion of the back anatomy and they are underneath the trapezius. The rhomboid muscle can be segregated into rhomboid major and rhomboid minor and they are both involved in scapular retraction. What this means is that the rhomboid will be effectively targeted with the same exercises which activate the mid and lower traps. Last but not least, we have the erector spinae muscles, also known as the spinal erectus. These muscles line the spinal column from the lower to the upper back and allow you to flex and extend your back in any given direction. They also support and protect your vertebrae, meaning that stronger spinal erectors lead to improved posture and core stabilization. The erector spinae can be targeted with deadlifts, hyperextensions, barbell good morning, and the barbell squat. Okay, now that we've covered the anatomy of the back, we can now jump right into the action of all the exercises. Here we have the one arm leg pull in, which is the leg pre activation exercise. I really like this as it helps me to feel my lats better in the main workout. Use a light weight and pull in a straight line. It's helpful to crunch laterally or lean into the direction of pull. If needed, you can keep your hand on the lats area to ensure that the appropriate muscle group is being recruited for the exercise. 
The next exercise is the lat pull down. Here, we'll be pulling to the front. You might see people in the gym pulling the bar behind their heads, but that puts the shoulders in a more vulnerable and injury prone position, which is why I prefer performing the lat pull down by pulling to the front. The bar should be held with a medium width, pronated, or overhand grip with 1.5 times the shoulder width as a guideline. Initiate the motion from the lat, give a good squeeze at the end of the pull and get a good stretch of the lats before initiating the next rep. For the seated cable row, sit with your back straight, knees slightly bent and arms fully extended. Grip the close grip handle with palms facing each other, extend your body forward and bend at the hips. Keep your back flat. Bring your arms in towards you, keeping your elbows close to your sides. At the same time, extend your body from the hip to a 90 degree angle. Hold and contract for 1 to 2 seconds. Then, release back to the extended starting position. For the T-bar row, assume a wide stance with your hips back and your chest up. Your arms should be extended. This will be your starting position. Pull the weight to your upper abdomen by retracting the shoulder blades and flexing the elbows. Next, we have the one-arm dumbbell row. The hand with the dumbbell should hang straight down with the palm facing the bench. Keeping the arm close to the side of your body, pull the dumbbell up to your side. After a pause, lower the weight down to the starting position. When pulling up, point the elbow towards the ceiling. Keep the abdominals tight and the lower back in a neutral position. Here we have the conventional deadlift. Start with your midfoot under the barbell. Use a stance slightly closer than shoulder width so that when you reach down to the bar, you are able to grip it at shoulder width. Drive your hips back, and once you hit the limit, allow your shins to move forward. I personally use a double overhand grip, but for those who would like to go for heavy lifts, an alternate grip helps with grip strength. Initiate the deadlift by pulling the back into a neutral position and maintain this flatness of the back throughout the entirety of the exercise. Drive the hips forward, and the bar should travel up in a straight vertical line. The last exercise that we have is the back extensions. Simply lift the upper body off, crunching towards the hips. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section what other videos you'd like to see and I'll cover it in the future. For now, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more. Bye!